lesson 2.5. We only have two more sections left in chapter 2. That means you have a test coming up soon. All right, we have two more sections in this chapter. This chapter, or this section deals with, again, normal distributions. The 68, 95, 99.7 rule has not changed. And we're going to use that to draw our normal distributions. But what if we want the area or the probability of something that doesn't fall directly on one of our standard deviations, right? So far, we just calculated the numbers based on our model and those um, only one or two standard deviations from the mean or between one and two. So now what happens if it's asking for 1.25 standard deviations from the mean? Okay. So again, we are looking at the standard normal distribution, right? We have the normal model with a mean of zero and one standard deviation above and below the mean. The standard normal distribution uses z-scores. We calculated these at the beginning of the chapter. We are always going to calculate a value's z-score and standardize the value and then calculate the probability or proportion that is greater than, less than, or between two values. Let's recall our equation for z-scores. Z was equal to X minus mu divided by sigma. That's value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That was our z-score. It was the number of standard deviations from the mean a value is. Let's recall the distribution of the Iowa basic skills, right? And these are the scores among all Gary, Indiana, seventh graders. It was approximately normal with the mean of 6.84 and a standard deviation of 1.55. What proportion of these seventh graders have vocabulary scores that are below a fourth grade level? So what you need to write down is not all of this. You need to write down so... It's the ITBS vocab scores. That's your context. Oh, I have two S's in there. It's normal with a mean of 6.84 and a standard deviation of 1.55. It wants to know what proportion is below fourth grade level. Okay, and there's a picture of the normal model drawn out with the mean and the standard deviation. And then here's the value that we want. It doesn't fall exactly at one standard deviation from the mean or two standard deviations. It's somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2, right? 4 is somewhere between negative 1 standard deviation from the mean and negative 2 standard deviations from the mean. So if I want to find these answers, I'm going to first calculate the z-score. Z is X minus mu over sigma. What is the value that I'm interested in? What is it asking me about? Fourth grade, right? I want to know what percent of students or proportion of students are below fourth grade. So fourth grade is that threshold I'm going to look for. Four minus, what's the mean? 6.84 divided by the standard deviation, 1.55. So use your calculator to find this z-score.
minus. Okay, so make sure you got that in your calculator. So as we score between negative one and negative two standard deviations from the mean, like we said it should based on the picture. Yes, negative 1.8 is between negative one and negative two, right? Okay, so now we need to find this area. And we can't use the numbers we had, the 68.95. We can't use the empirical rule because it's not exactly one standard deviation. And it doesn't, it's like, it's a curve. So it doesn't divide up evenly like a uniform distribution does. So there's ways that don't involve calculus to find these answers because the answer of the area under that curve is actually solving an integral from calculus. But they've made tables for us to find these answers. Here is a picture of a normal distribution table. Okay, I'm going to zoom in in a minute. All right. This table of values helps us find the, find the proportion for any z-score under the z-score I'm given. Okay, so it's always less than in the table. So I want to look at my table and I want to find negative 1.8. It was negative 1.83, right? Mm -hmm. So on the vertical column, I'm going to find one negative 1.8. See it? Well, that doesn't help. That's the same color. <laughs> okay, so there's negative 1.8, right? Then we're going to find the, the last decimal place, which was 3, right? See it up here? See it up there? 0.03. So we're going to come down. Where do they meet? Point zero three three six. So that is the probability of a value being negative one point eight three standard deviations or below the mean. So that's our answer. So our answer for the question is what proportion of um, our fourth grade or below is the answer from the table, 0 0.0336. Yeah. You do not need to memorize this table, and I'm going to teach you how to do it with the calculator, and you'll probably never use the table again, okay. except for in college when they decide that they don't like technology. No, you don't have to memorize the table. That's what the table is for. Oh, yeah, that's not even close to this. <laughs> There's at least a pattern in the other one. Okay. <laughs> so that's our thing. That's our answer. Now, there's also a way to get this from calculators. So if I want, remember we did that applet last week, Monday? We went to the website and we filled in some numbers on the applet. Okay, that's way too much work. Agreed? No one wants to have to go to the website and pull up an applet. So we're not going to use the applet, but you could if you needed to. This is what you have on your person all the time. Your graphing calculator should be as sacred to you as your cell phone because we need it and it's going to make our life a lot easier. Okay, so you are going to, if you have a TI-84 or 83, you're going to hit second and find the button that says VARS. Okay, I'm going to pull in a video so you can see my Second VARS. I'll show you in a sec. Just let me turn it on. VARS is right here next to clear. Okay. Above it, it says distribution. That st distr stands for distribution. So second VARS. And isn't this the standard normal distribution? We are going to be always using normal CDF, we never use normal PDF. Okay, so then hit enter. Now, your calculator just puts it into a screen. Hold on, let me get your calculator out so I can show both. PDF is a single value and because it's an area, it doesn't calculate it for us, all it can do is draw the picture. 
So CDF is going to calculate everything for us. If you're on this calculator, sorry, I forget that they're different sometimes. Second VARS, normal CDF, it opens it up like this, right? Okay, we are going to put in a lower boundary and an upper boundary. Now, since I wanted less than four, right? Less than fourth grade or below fourth grade, my lower boundary is basically negative infinity. But since we're just saying how many standard deviations from the mean, we're going to use negative 99. In your textbook, it uses 1,000, but that's not necessary to go that small. I'm going to have you do it exactly the way I teach the AP class to do it. And we use negative 99. Because negative 99 standard deviations from the mean is pretty much negative infinity, right? After three standard deviations from the mean, it's only 0.15%. Okay, so our lower boundary when we are doing less than is negative 99. Yes. And then comma, find your comma. It's above the 7. Okay. This isn't a very good, there, can we see that better? And then put in our z-score. Our z-score was negative 1.832. Um, in the TI-84s, it gives you a menu. I put negative 1.832. Okay, and the 84, you always leave mu 0 and sigma 1. Okay, are you ready? No. Negative, no, yeah, your lower is negative 1, E99, if it already has that in there, or you can just change it to negative 99 if you're on the 84. Okay, yes. So for less than, we're going to do negative 99 comma our z-score. Ready to hit enter? You don't have to. Notice I got the same answer. 0 0.0334. So remember that we cannot interchange the minus and the negative sign. So if you're getting an error, you probably used the minus, the blue button, instead of the negative button. Okay. No, that's just rounding error. If I did this without rounding and I put this whole, or if I just put in 1.83, then it would be more accurate. It would be more like the table. This one's actually more accurate because we're giving it more um, numbers. Okay. Okay, so that's. So if I'm rounding, technically this should be 3, 5. Okay, remember. Remember that round, the more you round, the less accurate you become, right? So most of the time, I try not to round in the calculator until the very, very end. So I will use the second answer button instead of um, typing in a, an approximation. But for us, this is going to be enough. Okay. All right. So the question, the answer is um, 0.0335. The proportion of seventh graders in Gary, Indiana, who scored fourth grade or below, is 0 0.0335. So you're going to have to be really careful doing the Pearson assignments because it's going to interchange between proportion and percent, right? So we could say 3.35% of the seventh graders scored fourth grade or below. So proportion is going to be the decimal. And the percentage, we move the decimal place twice. Okay.
You multiply by 100. Proportion is the decimal. Take the decimal, multiply it by 100, that gives you your percentage. Okay, so here's our next example. Suppose that for one model of car traveling at 60 miles per hour under typical conditions on dry pavement, the distribution of stopping distances is approximately normal with the mean of 165 feet and a standard deviation of 4 feet. So N165, 4, that's my mean and standard deviation. Marta is driving one of these cars when she spots an accident 170 feet in front of her and needs to make an emergency stop. About what percent of cars of this model would be able to make an emergency stop in less than 170 feet? Okay. So the first thing we always do is draw a picture. The picture was drawn for us on the last one. We're going to draw it on this one. So we draw our normal model, we put our mean in the middle, we add our standard deviation. And we're going to draw into our normal model what number it's asking me about. 170? About there, right? And everything less than that. Sometimes it'll be greater than, sometimes it'll be less than. Sometimes it's going to be between two values. And this is why we always go to the calculator for our answers because the table is going to be more work than it needs to be. Okay, so the first thing after you draw a picture, draw your model. Okay, it helps you visualize what you're finding. Two, calculate your z-score. So go ahead and calculate your z-score. So what does our z-score calculation look like? Yes, 170 minus 160 divided by 4. You have to show... It's 165, sorry. You have to show the numbers plugged into the equation. 170 minus 165 divided by 4, you have to show that. You don't have to show subtracting the top and then rewriting that fraction. You can do the rest of it in the calculator, but you have to show the numbers plugged into the equation. Okay, so that's going to be negative 1 point, no, positive 1.25, right? One of the reasons we draw the picture is to help us make sure that our number is reasonable, right? First of all, 170 is above the mean, so this needs to be positive. If it's not positive, I subtracted these wrong. And that's one of the big mistakes, is putting the mean in front of the value. We are still going to do negative 99 because it's asking us for the percentage that is less than 170. If it's more than, we're going to use a 99, positive 99, as our upper boundary. Because right now we're going to go from negative infinity to the z-score for 170. The other way is from the z-score to 170 to positive infinity, which is our net positive 99. So that would be our upper boundary. And then if I want between, I use both z-scores, my lower z-score and my upper z-score, and that will give us between two numbers. So... We then, in our calculator, here's how you show your work for using the calculator. You write down normal CDF, and then you write down what you put into the calculator. Negative 99 comma 1.25, and then we write our answer. So for less than, our lower boundary is negative 99, and our upper is the z-score. When we do more than, our lower is going to be the z-score and our upper is going to be positive 99. 
and between will be the small and the big. So what do we get when I do normal CDF negative 99, 1.25? Yes. 0 0.894 okay and let's just show that again in the calculator that you use so here's another thing might be ha handy I just did a normal CDF calculation I can do second enter second enter brings up what I just typed in and then I can go rewrite over this 1.25 and delete the rest of the numbers out without having to go into all the menus. So second enter, if you made a mistake and you need to fix something, hit second enter, that brings up your last entry and then you can edit your last entry before you hit enter. And that's 0.894. The four does not need to be rounded, right? Because the number next to it is less than five, okay? Recording. Oh, that's wrong. Okay, so what is our answer? Four. Answer the question. Ask for a percent. 89.4% of these cars can stop in less than 170 feet. Statistics is more about, do you understand what your final answer is, than it is can you come up with the numbers. You have a calculator, the math isn't that hard, right? You're subtracting, you're dividing, you're plugging something in, getting a percentage out. But what does that percentage mean? in the context of the information. Okay. All right, so those were two examples of less than. So we're trying this problem. The mean and standard deviation are still the same. Now I want to know the probability that it's less than 145 feet. This is another way we can write the question without having to write all the words. I want to know the probability that x is less than 145. Okay, so what did you get for your z-score? 145 minus 165 divided by 4 is negative 20 over 4, negative 5, right? And then we plugged it into the calculator and we got something super funky looking okay this is the calculator scientific notation what this means is 2.871 times 10 to the negative 7. so that e stands for times 10 to the power of the number behind it which means this percent this proportion the decimal goes seven times it is okay to leave your answer in scientific notation okay <laughs> but you need to convert the e to times 10 to the power okay this is scientific notation do not write e negative seven Okay, so the percent would then move it back to more. So 0.00002871% of cars will stop in less than 145 feet. So yes, basically zero, right? And the farther we get, at one point, the calculator will just say zero when you get too many standard deviations from the mean. The calculator will just say zero. But, right, it doesn't make sense to say 287%. You can't have 287% of cars. So when you get a number that is greater than one, you need to recognize 
there is scientific notation there always. If this is bigger than one, look for the scientific notation. Okay. Okay, our calculators are going to make this a lot easier, but I'm going to show you what the table means and how to use it. What proportion of Gary, Indiana, 7th graders have scores that are at least 9? That's at least ninth grade level. So there are 7th graders who have vocabulary of a ninth grader on the ITBS vocabulary test. Once again, we would start with this picture. It's drawn for us here. Calculate the z-score. That's where we start, right? So my z-score is 9 minus 6.84 divided by 1.55. So you're just writing again, same mean and standard deviation, at least 9. So that's the probability that x is greater than 9, greater than or equal to 9. In the standard normal model, because it's area under the curve, whether it's equal to or just greater than, the area is going to be the same. So it doesn't matter whether you write equal to or not, is what I'm saying. So what is this z-score? Yeah. 9 minus 6.84 divided by 1.55 is 1.394. Okay. Now, I want greater than. So I want from my z-score of 1.394 all the way to infinity. So which is our 99, right? It's always the smaller number, comma, the bigger number. Always. So what's our smaller number? 1.349, 394. Okay. So it's always the smaller number, so second, vars, normal CDF, and I'm going to put, so here's where I can do second answer. If I hit second and then above the negative sign it says answer, it'll just use my answer from above. Since I just calculated the z-score, why not? Comma, 99. I can close the parentheses or not, it doesn't make a difference. And my answer is... 0 0.0817, and I wasn't recording the calculator part of that. It's lame. So we write down what we put in our calculator, normal CDF. Because it's greater than, I'm going to put my z-score, 1.394,99. And in the calculator, that gave us 0 0.0817. Um, what's your question? While we're still working on the same problem, it was 1.39, right? So there's two parts of the standard normal table, positive and negatives. The table always gives you less than that number. So when we did 1.25, that would be 1.2, and over here is the 5, 0.8944. That's pretty much what we got for the previous example. But I want greater than for this one. 1 1.3, I'm going to find my way all the way over to 9, 0.9177. That's not what we got. We got 0 0.0817. Why? Because this number, if I want greater than, has to be subtracted from 1. Because this is the percent less than 1.394 standard deviations from the mean. The table is only the less than values. So we have to, if I want greater than, subtract from 1, which is why we don't use the table because our calculator just gives us the number we need. So we're picking up where we left off. Our last example asked us to find the probability of a upper 
question, right? It was more than nine. What was the probability that um, a kid in Gary, Indiana got more than a nine on this vocabulary test? Okay, so here is our example. Another one. When professional golfer Rory, I always say his name wrong, McElroy. Isn't it McElroy? No, I got made fun of for pronouncing it like that by my family. So, okay, so when Rory hits his driver, the distance the ball travels can be modeled by a normal distribution with a mean of 304 yards and a standard deviation of eight yards. So what do you need to write down in your notes? How do we, guys, there's way too much shocking. How do we write down the information we're given in this problem? Do we need to write all these sentences? No, no we're gonna write N. What's the mean? That was really cute. 304 comma eight. On a specific hole, what? Yeah, that's what we need to write down. On a specific hole, Rory would need to hit the ball at least 290 yards. So at least 290 to clear, to have a clear second shot that avoids a large group of trees. What percent of Rory's drives travel at least 290 yards? And is he likely to have a clear second shot? Okay, so at least, let's draw our normal model. So we have 304 in the middle. We're gonna add eight, 312, 320, 328. We're gonna subtract eight, uh, 290, Six and two eighty eight and two eighty. Okay. So where is this value we are trying to find? Two ninety. So that's about here, right? What does at least mean? Greater than, right? At least means that is the lowest value, right? The lowest value. You want to buy a bike, it costs $300. You need at least 315 with taxes, right? So if you have less than that, that's not going to work. You need to have more than that. So less at least means greater than. So that's where we could write x is greater than or equal to 290 in that notation. I want the probability that x is more than, greater than or equal to 290. And so that's all this area. So do I expect my answer to be greater than 50% or less than 50%? greater than, right? Because this is more than half of my picture. All right, so what is our first calculation? Calculate the z-score. Remember the z-score? Is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so take a second, calculate your mean, and get your, or calculate your z-score. Okay, so our z-score looks like 290 minus 304 divided by eight. Does a negative z-score make sense based on our picture? Yeah. Yes, because 290 is below the mean, right? And it's between negative one and negative two standard deviations. So the picture it helps us make sure we're like on the right track. Right, our z-score should be negative because it's below the mean mm -hmm. between negative one and negative two. That is true, so we're doing okay. And we expect our answer to be greater than 50. That's also gonna help us think about when we get our answer out of the calculator. Did we do the calculator part right? Okay, so let's see how we do this in the calculator. 
Okay, so we go second. Vars. Kayla. Second Vars. We go down to normal CDF. Okay, we put in, now you're gonna be given a menu. If you're using the TI-84, it looks a little bit different. I've got it right here. Down to two, normal CDF, it looks like this. Okay, if you're in the menu. Now, what is my lower number? Is it the Z-score or is it the 99s? Am I gonna use positive 99 or negative 99? This is asking for greater than. What am I gonna put in the calculator? Positive 99, which means my Z-score goes in first. Guys, you need to calm down. So my negative 1.75 goes in first. Yes. Or you could do second answer, but I didn't do that calculation in my calculator, so I can't use that. Yeah, you could do second answer if you just did it in your calculator. And then comma 99. My upper will be 99. And then you go down to paste. So we write, everybody writes the same thing. Normal CDF, negative 1.75 comma 99 and then I paste negative 99 cannot be bigger than negative 1.75 so it has to be positive 99 right remember it's negative infinity and positive infinity so I have to use either positive 99 as my upper boundary or negative 99 is my lower boundary. I cannot interchange that. So upper is, and the upper one is going to be... Is, one yes, one I'm one always... Why don't you include zero? Because, this because that's basically cheating to let the calculator do all that work for you. So we just leave it as zero and one. I don't need to write it down. Can you show us again how to paste the answer? So I didn't do that yet. So hold on. It's... If I did 290... Minus 304 divided by 8. Now when I do second distribution normal CDF, hit second. And above the negative sign, it says ANS, answer. So you'll see answer and then comma 99. Same answer. Okay. And this one, we get the same answer. Hold on. Stop the recording. Yes, one sec. Yeah. The question is, how do we tell whether it's positive 99 or negative 99? It depends on the question. The question asks for at least, right? Did we shade less than? Did we shade towards positive infinity? Or did we shade our, our graph towards negative infinity? We shade it towards positive infinity, so it's positive 99, right? Because we want all the shading until we get to 99 standard deviations from the mean. That's our positive infinity. The less thans is what we, when we put negative 99 in. So the question said at least, which means greater than. Greater than will always be comma 99. Less than will always be negative 99 comma your z-score. Okay, so our answer, 0.96, it's 0.95994, so if I'm rounding the three decimal places, the nine rounds the other nine up, so it's 0.96. Now, it says what percent? Is 0.96 a percent? No, you ought to pay attention to those details, right, in the, cal in the computer. So the percent is 96% of Rory's shots, drives, will travel at least 290 yards. 
Do you think he's pretty likely to clear those trees? Yeah. Yes. There's a 96% chance that he's going to hit it far enough to get the trees out of the way. Yeah. We just leave it as 0.96. Yeah. So if it asks for proportion, we leave the answer as it gives us in the calculator. That's a proportion between 0 and 1. If it asks for percent, we're going to multiply by 100 and turn it into a percentage. Okay. I like it. So we did less than. We did greater than. Now between. What if I want to find the area between two scores? So you are looking, again, we're looking at the same Gary, Indiana, seventh graders. What percent of them scored between six and nine? That's where seventh graders should be somewhere in that range, right? Because they're in middle school, right? Beginning of middle school to the end of middle school. So what percent of these kids, their vocabulary scores are between six and nine? So to find that, we have to find two z-scores. We have to find the z-score for six, and we have to find the z-score for nine. And the nice thing about the calculator is we'll just use the smaller z-score for our lower boundary and the bigger z-score for our upper boundary. Our lower boundary should always be smaller than the one we put in for the upper boundary, right? The first number when we do normal CDF has to be smaller than the second number. If you're not putting them in that way, then you're putting them in wrong, right? Smaller, larger. So calculate the two z-scores for 6 and 9. The mean is what? 6.84, standard deviation, 1.55. Take a second, find your z-score for 6, and find your z-score for 9. Okay, so when I calculate my z-score, did you get what I got? 6 minus 6.84 divided by 1.55, negative 0 0.542. Guys, I am The second z-score is 9 minus 6.84 divided by 1.55, which is 1.394. Because the 5 rounds the 3 up. Now... Our picture is what helps us make sense. Did we do it right? Looking at our picture, is the z-score for six between the mean zero standard deviations and negative one standard deviation? Is negative 0.5 between zero and negative one? No. Yes. Negative 0.5 is between zero and negative one, correct? Oh, yes. Because this is zero standard deviations and negative one standard deviation. And is my second z-score between one standard deviation and two standard deviations from the mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're checking, we're using our picture to kind of make sure things are, make sense, right? And then we want to know what this area is going to be. I'm not finding less than six. I'm not finding greater than nine. I'm finding in between. So when I plug it into the calculator, I use normal CDF. My lower boundary is the lower z-score, negative 0.542. And my upper boundary is my upper z-score, my bigger z-score. I don't need to do any subtraction. If I was using a table to get this information, I'd have to find both values and then subtract them. That's too much work. Let's just use our calculators, okay? So let's show this. So we're going to do second, VARs again, normal CDF. Oops, sorry. I'm going to put in. Now, I can't use answer on this because I need this number up here. So I need to type in negative 0.542 comma. Now I could do second answer if I wanted instead of typing in the 1.394. Okay. Do I have to? No. If I use the answer button, I'm going to get a much more accurate answer, but it's not going to be off by a lot. 
So there's an acceptable amount of leeway, right? So we're gonna plug that in and I get 62.4. So 62.624. What was the question? Did it ask for a proportion or a percent? Estimate the proportion, okay? So the proportion of Gary, Indiana students scoring between 6 and 9 is 0 0.624. Okay, so here's, here's another example. You can do this one on your own. Can you get this? When Rory hits his driver again, he hits his driver with a mean of 304 and a standard deviation of 8. You better believe these are actual data values for his driver. They keep a ridiculous amount of statistics in every sport right? There are people, my husband and I were talking about this this weekend, that get paid a lot of money to sit up in the best seats of the football stadiums, analyze and crunch statistics during the game, and if they win a Super Bowl, they get a Super Bowl ring for statistics, right? They call it analytics, right? It's a Moneyball, the movie Moneyball. We might actually watch a movie in this class someday. We're going to watch Moneyball? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'd have to fit it into my curriculum, but some, sometime. Okay, so on another hole, he has the opportunity to drive the ball into the green if he hits the ball between 305 and 325. What proportion of his drives have the ability to make that green? He's a pro, so they generally hit them straight. So we want to know if he's going to hit the green that's 305, the front of the green, the back of the green is 325. So we're going to find our two Z scores. If we look at our picture, 304 is our mean, right? 305 is just above it. And then 325, uh, let's see, 8 was 312, 320. And 328, so we're looking in here. Neither of our z scores should be negative because both of them are above the mean, right? So z, the first one is 305 minus 304 divided by 8, which is 1 eighth point one two five, right? Did you get 0 0.125 for your first z score? Okay, my second z-score is 325 minus 304 divided by 8. 325 minus 304. 21 divided by 8 is 2.625. Did you get that for your second z-score? Yes. yes. Good. Yep. Now, since I want between these two values, not less than or greater than one of them, my normal CDF... My lower boundary is the lower z-score, yeah. and my upper is my bigger z-score. Mm -hmm. So lower z-score, upper z-score, right? Always lower, upper. If I'm looking at greater than, my upper is 99. Less than, my lower is negative 99. And we get 0.446. So we could say the proportion of Rory's drives that are between 304 and 325 is 0 0.446.